Hello you lovely lot and welcome to the beautiful Cudmore Fisheries where we are on the Suez Canal where I'm going to be showing you all how to fish sweet corn. It's one of them baits, the old humble sweet corn that is often overlooked but for this time of year it can be absolutely deadly so we're like where are we now sort of like middle of September even all year through winter when that water starts to clear up a little bit bright yellow piece of corn like that is just amazing. Also for like venues that are prone to wind and undertow the beauty of corn is it's a really sort of heavy bait it just stays exactly where you're putting it dead dead simple to use and really really uh, requires easy rigs as well so without further ado let's go through rigs first now we'll go through plumbing up um shortly and it's sort of like a separate one because where i choose to fish corn is out of sort of like the main track if you like obviously a typical snake lake here sort of 15 16 meters wide i don't want to be fishing down the middle where it's completely flat bottom and where all the silt collects i want to be just going up the slope a little bit where that ground starts to become a little bit harder still going to get the odd bubble coming up but the main amount of sort of horrible sludge and silt will not collect there and that's where you want to be fishing certainly with heavier baits like corn because obviously we'll go for it more when we're fishing but basically when you're when your corn, if it's in that silt and it starts, you know, the fish start coming in, scouring the bottom out, then your float is going to disappear. So that's why we're just going up that slope a little bit. Anyway, that's for another part. Uh, elastic wise, first of all, bearing in mind, these fish haven't had a proper feed up yet for winter and it's, it's going to be imminent, folks. So you don't want to be going too light on your elastics. What I'd recommend is sort of like 10 to around sort of like a 13 grade of elastic. Now this is the uh, Preston 13s, Jura hybrid elastic, great for you know F1s, carp, skimmers, pretty much everything basically. It's not too overgun that should I catch some smaller fish, uh, I'm going to be bumping them off, but it's got enough power in it that if I do get some great big wobbly carps, then we're going to have no trouble getting them out whatsoever. Coming down to the rig itself, it's really simple. Um, main line wise, I'm still on point 20, folks, no need to go any lighter. So, main line is point 20, uh, AccuPower in this case. I've already plumbed up and we've got sort of like what 12 to 14 inches between pole tip and float there. Don't need to go any shorter than that, just keep it nice and nice and sort of long if you like. You don't want to come too short because if wind affects you, you know, your pole or anything like that, then the beauty of having it this long, it's going to keep the rig in place and not going to sort of like wobble off your, off your marker. Back shots on as always, tip x out because it's dark water across. I want to make sure I can see them, so they're just two number eight stots. Coming onto the float itself, just keep it simple. You know, you'll see that we use floats like this for 90% of our fishing, this sort of stretched, um, you know, Chianti style float. Wire or carbon stem, I've gone to uh, for a wire stem today just because I want that... Um, stability in the float but honestly folks carbon stem again for this time of year wouldn't matter bristle wise don't worry yourselves with it the beauty of using corn you can get away with a thicker bristle this is a 1.7 on this but don't worry about that overly and then you can see there so depth wise we've got so there's five foot uh, so we've got sort of like four foot four foot nine if you like something like four foot eight uh, and that's why i'm choosing to fish up the slope a little bit it's probably it's around five foot, just over five foot in the deepest bit of the water down the middle. And then we're just fishing up that slope a little bit. And then coming down the rig, um, again, I'm just keeping it right simple. You'll see I've gone for shots as opposed to stots. Now for me, again, I've talked about this loads, the trouble with using stots, when I want this shot in, in this capacity, uh, is every single fish that you net, them stots will be moving. So now imagine that over a, a match, you're constantly putting them shots back into the same place. It's just going to take time and cost you fish. So by using shots that don't move on your line, you're just straight back in business again. And look how simple it is. Literally, we've got a bulk of number eight shots there, six number eights, and I've got a single number nine dropper. Um, just because I want to get straight down to where the fish are, with obviously corn being a heavy bait, I want to be nice and positive, getting the rig straight down to where the fish are. This number nine, obviously, when we detect a shot, as soon as you get a little bite on that, it's going to register. And then, how easy is that, folks? So, point 20 main line, and this is a straight out of the packet, point 13s to a size 14 hook, and it's in SFLB. I've got them here, actually. Them ones. I've not shortened it up or anything like that. It's just straight out of the, uh, out of the packet there, straight off the, uh, the, the winder, uh, and it's just good to go. Nothing complicated with what we're doing. 
the, the main thing is, is choosing the right areas to fish. So um, I think before we do that, before I show you plumbing up, we'll just quickly talk through bait. So literally, with it being a corn feature, I've got corn. Now, any corn will do. It's one of them, don't overly bother yourself. I do like to use sort of like a smaller grain though when I'm fishing corn. Now, to kickstart the swim, I'll pretty much always use micro. So these are two mil micros. We've done loads and loads of videos how to prepare them. Basically soaked them for around 90 seconds, drained all the water off, and that's what you'll get. Now, starting off wise, we're just gonna put a few in, but other than that, I'm pretty much not gonna feed them. I'm just gonna go for the corn, and I'm gonna introduce sort of like 12 to 14 grains. That's all I'm gonna be doing. I want to really make sure when I'm fish coming to the peg, they see my grain of corn, nail it and away you go. So I think without further ado, we'll go through plumbing up so you can see where exactly I'm choosing to fish. Right then, you lovely lot, our brand new Winning Ways merch has just arrived. We have got the blue hoodie, the black hoodie, the grey polo and also available is the limited edition Pets on the Cave t-shirt. So head over to www.winningways.shop and get yourself them bought. Yeah! Right, plumbing up then folks, I'm gonna show you exactly where I'm fishing and where not to fish. First things first though, nice heavy plummet, 30 gram. Idea is to come really check for that silt. So, as I said, most of the fishing sort of like over the summertime on waters like this, certainly a big emphasis on shallow fishing, that is down the middle of the canal, the deepest bit of water. And that's why we don't want to go down there, simply because, so we're roughly down the middle now, if I let that, uh, that plummet just go there, it's just collecting all that silt. Yeah, you see the plug-in on the elastic, and that tells you whether you're on silt or not. And you only achieve that by using a heavier plummet. So I'd always recommend sort of a 30 gram plummet, plumbing up in silt. So what, what I'm looking for is that bit just where it starts to creep up just where we're coming out of the horrible silt where it's collecting the sea. It's just starting to creep up a little bit there. Coming on to sort of like top of the body of the float now, and then sort of like getting towards the middle of the body. It just comes up ever so slightly, but it's what we want. We want that sort of like harder, harder ground. So we're getting to where I'm fishing now. Now I've got a mark on my pole. I'm on the uh, sort of like middle of my box and I've got a reed in the, in the distance there. It's actually just moved to a fish knocking it. <laughs> and we are bottom of the body of the float. If it was really sort of like a real steep incline on the slope, then I'd be at the middle of the body. But when it's like, a, it's just nice and gradual, you see, I'm just gonna stretch out another sort of foot or so, if you like, and it doesn't really come up that much. You see, probably comes up about another two inches, that's all. Yes, yeah, so it's just nice and gradual, but it's much, much harder that bottom there. When I let that, that plummet go nice and Nice and quick from a height, I'm not getting that plug in. It's not plugging into the sill. We're still gonna get the odd bubble because there's still a little bit of soft, <laughs> soft bottom there, but nothing like it'd be down the middle. So that's where I'm choosing to fish. So nice and simple, bottom of the body of the float. And then we are good to go. So first things first, what we will do is put a little pot on that top kit. Now pot wise, again, I love feeding bait me folks, but it's so important that you choose not sort of like a small one yet, but like a medium sized one. Now I don't want to be feeding, you know, filling that up every time. My initial feed is going to be, I'm going to put literally getting on that reshard, hardly any micros whatsoever. I don't want the fish getting too preoccupied on their micro pellets, but the beauty of micros, we've said it loads and loads of times, is for getting fish into your peg, there's probably not a better bait. So we're going to put a few micros in, and then grains of corn, just around 10 to a dozen. Don't want loads of grains of corn in there because I want them to pick ultimately my hook bait out. It might be that, you know, when we go in again, now bearing in mind it's going to be every sort of, I'm going to see if we can get that on and uh, hook it. It's going to fall out in it, folks, but we'll see how we get on. Um, I want them to pick my hook bait out. So it might be the next time we go in, we just put like half a dozen grains of corn in. Now bearing in mind it's going to be roughly every five minutes still this time of year folks don't let five minutes go by without coming back putting some more bait in or the other thing to think about is if you bump a fish you see a massive big commotion come back feed again uh, or obviously if you catch a fish within five minutes you're feeding every time you go in i only want that initial bit of micros just to draw them fish in though as i say so hooking the corn it's important when you're hooking the corn i don't like to choose a massive piece sort of like a medium like a 
it's not like a front tooth because some people have big front teeth but like a what we're going to like a just like a medium-sized tooth <laughs> like a yeah but molars can be big yeah just just a medium-sized grain of corn folks not a massive grain of corn but the most important thing is when you're hooking it we just want to nick it in the side of that corn yeah so all that hook's exposed now bearing in mind when i'm fishing that is going to be on the bottom yeah, that, that's going to be on the bottom, so fish can't see anything untoward, obviously, they see your hook bait and nail it. I don't want to be hooking it too deep or anything like that, because corn's quite tough, and it'll take a bit for that to, that hook to come through. So, bait's still in there. Again, just take your time when you're shipping out, slight downward pressure on your pole, make sure that rig's on the water all the time. And then, first things first, is I'm going to get on my marker on the back of my pole, now my port is like an inch back on the top kit, so I'm just going to stretch out about another inch, line up with my marker over there, which is that reed that's coming in, and I'm just going to plop that bait in, come back to my marker and my pole, and then I'm just going to, don't need to lay the rig in or anything like that folks, remember we're on the slope, so just lift that float up until everything straightens out, and then just lower it, lower it into place. Now you can see that my back shots, um, Whichever way the wind's going, obviously you want to counteract that. So I want to make sure that my float is in position all the time. Uh, as regards to lifting and dropping, it's personal preference, folks. Personally, I like to just leave it there, you know, set that little, that little babby tiny trap. But other days, you've got to experiment on the day with that, I suppose. Other days, you'll, you'll go in and, you know, the fish really like to watch that bait down, especially with a... A longer hook length on, you know, obviously a six inch hook length, it can make a difference sometimes. So instantly you can see, like, that bait's got down to the bottom now, we're getting the odd bubble, but it'd be nothing like if we're in that horrible uh, silt in the, in the middle of the, of the lake. Um, it's just now, this is the beauty of corn fishing. Yeah, you can just be waiting and waiting, and then we're waiting for that nice, like, ding, fast, proper, rapid bites. It's such an effective way of fishing. I love it, especially this time of year when, you know, obviously the fish start to think about proper feeding up. They want a bit more oomph in the, in the food that they're eating. So corn can work really well. And obviously all through winter when it's, uh, you know, the water does go that little bit clearer. So remember, obviously we, we're, we're starting. This is like real time for you now, folks. I haven't pre-baited it or anything like that. It's literally first go in. All I'm leaving it is five minutes. That's all I'm leaving it before I come back and put some more bait in. I won't put my coals in again unless I feel as though I need to sort of, you know, try and draw some fish in the peg. I'll just want to use the, the corn. Or maybe I might put like a, a tiny pinch in, in again on my second feed, but I don't want to be putting that, the my coals in all the time. So you have a little bit of an indication then. I'm going to leave that. Oh, yeah, so you see there's a fish coming to that bait. I'm just going to leave that, though. Don't want to lift and drop, certainly when there's a fish there, because we might foul hook it, and we don't want to foul hook it. But don't need to, you know, reset my rig, I'm just going to leave it. We knew there was a fish there, hopefully he's still going to be around, and hopefully we're going to catch him. Go on, if he's here. Yes, yeah, so it's just a case of just being nice and patient and building your swim. I say, if you get them too preoccupied on other baits, then they're not going to take, take your corn. There we go then, first one, I think it might be a skimmer or something, but again that's the beauty of that corn, you will catch. Everything's swimming on it, but usually it's like the bigger the species as well. Might be a fun, no I'm going for skimmer. What are we going for folks, what do you reckon? Oh go on the poppadoms, <laughs> yeah boy. So it's fish like that folks, that you will pick up, look at him. Never seen it up before that folks. It's fish like that that you will pick up by using, you know, sort of like them sort of more selective baits if you like. I mean, well, I say selective, but you've seen corn will catch everything, but I suppose the beauty of it, it's just gonna deter them, you know, them little babby fish kind of thing. So we'll have another one of him. So again, not a massive grain of corn. Obviously check for slime or anything like that. And sometimes you'll get them fish blowing that uh, corn up your hook length. Don't use that same bit of corn, folks. Just go in with a new bit. Yeah, so we're going to put another dozen grains of corn in. I'm not going to put any micros in. Definitely not, because I just want to use that corn. That's what we want. We just want to sit there for, you know, 
a little bit, just let everything get settled, and then just get that nice fast bite that we had then. So again, nice and accurate on your marker. Come back, lift that float out. Remember, don't lift your whole rig out because you're on a slope and as you're shipping out, that rig will be back towards you. Just want to lift your float out and then just lower it in once everything's straightened out. Perfect. Such an effective way of fishing, I do love it. Oh, another little dink there. It's probably that was a fish intercepting that bait um, on the drop kind of thing. You will get that still. Obviously, it's, you know, still a bit warm. But within the next week or two, when that, you know, weather starts to plummet a little bit and starts going colder, plumbing it, folks, that's when it really comes into its own corn. So you see what I mean? This odd little bubble coming up telling us a fish in a peg. If I was fishing down the middle on this, it'd just be an eruption, you know? So the toe is just slightly, even though there's no way you can't see any wind, folks, it is blowing right to left. It just wants to pull my float out to the left, but that's why I've got my back shots on the right hand side. Go on, the caps. Back shots on the right hand side, I'm holding my float in position. And they say we're waiting for that nice fast bite. So obviously we had that fish uh, pretty quick, you know, by putting the micros in the corner in. I've gone in this time with no micros. If I don't get a bite within five minutes, and that tells me that I still need to put a few, you know, two mil, two mil pellets in just to get them fish mooching. But ultimately, I want to be just putting corn in, really sort of like getting them fish nice and um, zoned in on the corn. So they're really picking my bait out. It uh, can be one of the best baits for like the, the time of year to fish sweet corn. Absolutely adore it. And it's nice and cheap as well, isn't it? Lovely cheap days fishing. You don't need to put a lot of feed in either. It's just that big standout bait. Right, there's a fish there now, so hopefully we're going to catch it in a sec, folks. It's just ever so slightly nudge my float back through to the right. So I'm just going to mend it back out so that my float's right over my marker and right over my bait. And hopefully we go and catch it. You want a fish is. Another one of them poppadoms would be nice, but... As I say, it's, it's a bait that you'll catch absolutely everything on. And you can get away with the safe fishing that little bit heavier as well with uh, with corn. Such is the weight of it. It's not like when you're maggot fishing and you've got to fish light, a little bit lighter to bring them, that bait in nice and natural. Just give you a lot of confidence. Is it another fish there now? Yeah, see how quick that bait was? Uh, sorry, the bait, the bite. That's another skimmer, that. Hey, that would do, wouldn't it? So if I tried to fish sort of like maybe maggots or expanders for these fish, I'd probably be getting a lot of smaller fish, maybe the odd gudgeons. And this is the beauty of using corn. It does target the bigger fish, but also everything swimming as well. I've not caught skimmers in here for ages, folks. It just shows you, doesn't it? Look at them. Weight builders, you know what I mean? These probably 10 ounce or so, 10 or 12 ounce proper weight builders. And I quite happily, you know, just continue on with that all session and what, what will happen and what is noticeable when you start off catching skimmers you know as they're sort of like coming into your pegging numbers sort of like flashing around and everything 100% they will attack the bigger fish they'll attack the carp and the F1s and remember if you go uh, go in I mean you're not going to be going five minutes without a bite folks on these kind of waters for this time of year but if you do then just sneak a few more micros back in but ultimately stick with that corn so keep putting like 12 12 to 15 bits of corn in uh, and mix it up sometimes as i say lifting dropping will work but ultimately that's what you want you want it to sit there no commotion no commotion and then for it to just nail under with a fish on so hope you've enjoyed it folks let us know how you get on and uh, yeah going back up <laughs>